Okay, let's talk about direct and inverse variation. So that's a topic that we're going to be discussing in this video. And this is something that you kind of uh, start learning about in like an Algebra 1 course. So it is uh, in most Algebra 1 courses, you're going to see this, certainly if you're in Algebra 2. So if you've never seen a direct or uh, inverse variation problem, well, this is one. And let's go ahead and read the problem. It says X and Y vary directly. When x is equal to 3, y is equal to 6, what is y when x is equal to 10? Okay, so if you think you can solve this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one moment, and then, of course, I'm going to walk through step-by-step step how to solve this. And again, if you've um, not ever uh, kind of studied a direct and inverse variation. I'm going to give you kind of a quick, quick, quick overview, but uh, this is a topic that you're definitely going to want to follow up and do more problems on. But uh, anyways, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades. It really is my true calling to help uh, as many people as I possibly can learn mathematics. I'm going to tell you right now, all of you could be successful in math, and I'm um, especially speaking to those of you that have a tough time with math. What you need is to learn from someone or something that you actually understand. Nothing's more frustrating than you know being confused in class, and the way I like to teach math is to explain things in simple to understand, easy to understand uh, you know, ways and language that all people can get uh, without watering down what you need to know. So if you need help in your current math course, or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for that has math on it, something like the GED, SAT, or maybe a teacher certification exam. Uh, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm going to leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span these categories and much, much more. I'm also going to leave links to my math notes in the description as well. You absolutely need a great pair of notes to study from. You should be taking your own great notes, but in the meantime, you can use mine as you improve yours. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this. We have uh, right here, this is a direct variation problem. Again, if you've never seen this before, I'll explain this in a second, but let's take a look at the answer. So X and Y vary directly when X is equal to 3, Y is equal to 6. Uh, what is Y when X is equal to 10? Well, y is equal to 20. All right, so that is the answer. And so some of you out there might be like kind of confused. You may, may not even understand the question. But some of you maybe understood the question and got a different answer. But some of you uh, understood the question and got this right. So for those of you that were able to ace this problem, let's go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A+, plus, A 100%. And a few stars, so you can tell your friends and family that you understand basic direct uh, variation, and you're able to do this problem. So that's very, very good. All right, so let's just quickly, quickly uh, talk about direct and inverse variation. All right, so I'm just going to kind of give you a quick little sketch here. This is my sketch of a pot, and here let's call this our fire on a stew, uh, stove, right? So let's say this pot right here has a little lid on it and inside we have water okay all right so this is an example of direct variation so here we have temperature here we have pressure i'm going to turn this into a science class but you'll get the idea all right so as the temperature goes up as we increase the temperature okay what do you think is going to happen to the pressure inside of this pot with the lid on it okay well uh, if your answer is, well, Mr. U2 math man, isn't the pressure going to go up as well? You would be correct. Okay. So this is an example of direct variation. In other words, as we increase the temperature, the pressure goes up as well. Temperature and pressure vary directly in this scenario. Okay. So as I bring down the temperature, shut off the fire, uh, and the pressure would come down as well. Okay. So that's an example of direct variation or something I would have uh, the relationship that varies directly. Okay, so let me try to think of something here with inverse variation. Let's think of like a little balloon that you blow up like for a birthday party. All right, so this um, has air in it. And of course we have volume over here. So here's our big old balloon. 
Now let's think about uh, the pressure in this balloon, okay? Now here, if I decrease the volume, okay, what's gonna happen to the pressure? All right, so in other words, if I take my little hands and I start squishing the balloon, and I try to like make this balloon really, really small, okay, with the same amount of air, what's gonna happen to the pressure inside? Well, it's going to increase, right? So as the volume decreases, as I'm decreasing the volume, the pressure in this scenario goes up. So this is, would be an example of inverse variation. Okay, so for those of you that were confused about direct and inverse variation, this is a basic, basic uh, introduction to the concept. But again, something that you need to know because this does come up um, a lot in your algebra courses. Uh, you know, typically, again, first year algebra courses is, is, uh, is where you're going to see this, and you'll see this in science classes as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the problem and uh, get a little bit more formal about this. So we're talking about direct and inverse variation. Okay, so we need to know two formulas, and the first uh, for direct variation is this general formula, y equals kx, and for inverse variation, you need to know uh, this formula, uh, yx is equal to k. So we're dealing with this k. What is k? Well, we got the k here in the direct, and then k is right here in inverse. k is what we call the constant of variation, constant of variation. Let's take a look at the, um, these formulas, just real basic common sense, right? So if I have a number, let's say some, some sort of constant, okay? Some, let's just make up a number here. Uh, let's call this y equals 3x, all right? So as I plug in numbers, that's a constant. A constant is just one number. We don't know what it is, so we're calling it a variable. Uh, let's say a number like 3, for example, would be an example of a constant. But as I plug in values for x here, whatever they are, if I multiply by this constant, I'm gonna get a respective uh, increase with my y, right? So this is direct variation. But over here, let's suppose I had y x is equal to three. So to keep this as three, if I increase my y value, right? Well, I'm gonna to have to decrease my x value in order to always keep that product of these two numbers at three. Okay, so this is an example of inverse variation. We're not dealing with it. Uh, with this in this particular problem. By the way, if you are studying variation and you need a lot more help on this, check out like my Algebra 1 uh, course in my Math Help program. It will really, really help you out. Okay, so we need to understand this constant of variation. We need to find it, okay? We can't solve any of these problems unless we have the constant of variation. And I'm gonna show you exactly how to find this and solve this uh, particular problem right now. Okay, so here we go. So X and Y vary directly. Okay, so you're thinking to yourself, oh, very directly. Well, uh, this right here, direct, it's not going to say direct variation, but we are thinking this formula, y equals kx. All right, so we're going to be needing the direct variation uh, formula, not the inverse, the direct. So uh, x and y very directly. When x is equal to 3, y is equal to 6. And this is really the secret to unlocking this problem. Okay, so we're already given a pair of numbers here, some sort of uh, um, way to kind of define this relationship. So when x is equal to 3, y is equal to 6, this is enough information for us to solve for k. Okay, so what we're going to do is plug in 3 for x, and when we plug in 3 for x, we got y uh, for 6. Okay, so we, using this formula and this uh, kind of um, data, we can find k. Once we have k, we can create a general formula, and then we can easily uh, figure out what y is when x is equal to 10. So the first step in these problems is, one, to identify what type of variation you're dealing with. In this particular uh, problem, we're dealing with uh, direct variation, so we're going to use the right formula. Then we need to get k, and then we need to build our general formula and then solve and answer the question. So let's go see that right now. Okay, so when x and y vary directly, uh, x is equal to 3, y is equal to 6. What is y when x is equal to 10? First order of business is to find k. All right, we need k. So when x is equal to 3, we're going to plug in a 3 for x, y is 6. So we have 6 is equal to k3. Basically, that's this lovely uh, formula right here. 6 is equal to 3k, right? This is multiplication. So it's k times 3 or 3 times k. But we'll see it this way, and then we need to just solve for k divide both sides of the equation by 3, 
and we get x uh, k is equal to 2. So <laughs> I'm solving the equation for x, right? so I'm solving the equation for k. So k is equal to 2. Okay, so now here is our uh, general formula for direct variation. We wanted k. We have k now. So now our specific formula for direct variation in this particular problem is y equals 2x, okay, because we know k is 2. So y is equal to 2x. So now we can uh, answer the question, and the question is, what is y when x is equal to 10? Okay, well, that's easy. All we got to do is simply plug in 10 into this formula and get y. So we're going to replace x when x is 10. There you go. You can see we're going to replace that x with a 10. So 10 times 2 is 20. y is equal to 20. Okay, so this is an example of a simple variation problem. Again, there's a lot more uh, type of problems. This is, you know, again, uh, simple. You need to uh, understand the difference or recognize the difference when you're dealing with a direct or inverse variation situation. And then you need to know how to use these formulas, find the constant variation, and kind of work through these problems. Again, this is a topic you will see in algebra. And if you need additional help on this, uh, you definitely want to check out like my Algebra 1 course. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.